In this series of tutorials, I'm going to teach you how to create this matrix effect using the media player, textures, and a Niagara system. What I've decided to do is break this tutorial down into approximately three parts. So this first part, I'm going to be creating what you hopefully see behind me, essentially creating the matrix and flying a camera through it. Obviously, it won't have my logo in it, but this is what we are creating today. To save a little time today, I'm going to be using an MP4 and textures that I found on ArtStation. It only costs a dollar and there is a free version available. I will leave a link in the description. You can, however, create your own if you desire. Right, let's start by creating a film, video and live events blank project. With the project created, let's create a new folder and call this Matrix. And next, I'm going to go to Media, File Media Source, and give this a name, Matrix FX. I'm going to open this up, and in the file path, I'm going to choose my downloaded MP4. Here it is. And I'm going to hit Save. Next, I'm going to go to Media, Media Player and check Video Output Media Texture Asset. Click OK. I'm going to give this name. Matrix Player. And as you can see, automatically created the texture. If we open up the Media Player, this is what we have so far. I'm going to click Loop here. And Save. OK, let's create a material and give it a name. And then I'm going to instantly create a material instance, which we will use to texture the walls. Let's open up our material. And to begin, I'm going to set my material to unlit and check two-sided. Next, I'm going to drag in my media texture, like so, and it creates this texture sample. First, I think we'll deal with the brightness, so I'm going to drag out of RGB and search for a multiply node. And I'm going to connect this to emissive color. And then I'm going to need a parameter, hold down one and click. I'm going to convert this to parameter and name this brightness. With that done, it's time to deal with the UV mapping. I'm going to search for a texture coordinate node. Here it is. And I want to be able to control this, so I'm going to hold down one again and create another parameter. Convert to parameter and name this UV scale. I'm going to add a multiply node and connect the texture coordinate and my parameter and then connect that to UVs on the texture sample. I'm then going to comment this section. Call this UV scale. And then I need to set some default values at this point. So for UV scale, I'm going to set this to one. And for brightness, one. That's it. Hit save. OK, next, I need to make some adjustments to my media texture. I'm going to open this up. I'm 
I'm going to click here on advance and I'm going to change the tiling method for both X and Y to wrap. And save. OK, I'm going to now create the scene. So I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to scale and position this. I'm going to apply my material to this cube. And initially to get our material texture playing, I will open up the media player and click play. Next, I'm going to open up our level blueprint. And I'm going to create a new variable and call this source. And I'm going to set the type to file media source here. And I'm going to choose object reference. I'm going to set this to public. Next, I'm going to create another variable and call this player. I'm going to set its type to media player. And choose object reference and set this to public. I'm going to hit compile and save. I'm going to set the default value of the source to our matrix effects file source and the default value of the player to matrix player. Hit compile and save. I now drag in the player variable. I choose get player. And drag in the source variable and choose get source. I'm then going to drag off player. And find open source. I'm going to connect the event begin play to it and the source variable to media source. Hit compile and save. Now, if we go to play or simulate, as I'm going to do, our media player now automatically plays. As you can see, if I zoom inside the cube, because we selected a two-sided material, it already looks pretty cool. But I think we can make it look a little bit better by making it transparent. So I'm going to open up my material. And I'm going to change the mode. To additive. And the black background of my texture disappears and we now have this. I now want to make some changes to the scene. I think I'm going to delete the floor and then delete anything else I don't need. And so all we're left with is a cube and a light source. I'm going to change the light source color to green. It's better reflects the theme. And as you can see, I can zoom in and out of the cube. And it already looks pretty cool. What I want to do now is create more cubes of varying scales. So uh, maybe we will set this one to eight. And what I want is for the cube to live inside the other cube. Like so. I'm going to assign my material instance that I created at the beginning to this cube. Great. And then I'm going to duplicate this cube as many times as I deem necessary and just scale it down each time. So I think I will settle on four cubes for now and this final value I'll set to two. So what we've got is cubes within cubes with material instances assigned. And so if I hit play, this is what we have. And we can fly through the matrix like so. What I'm going to do is assign a material instance to my first cube. I didn't do that. And then I'm going to open up that material instance. And from here, I can adjust the brightness of all the cubes because they all share the same material instance. 
And I can also adjust the material UV scale. Like so. Now, we'll set this for two for now. I'm going to keep the brightness at the same scale for now. Yeah, maybe 1.5. Yep, I like the way that looks. I'm going to add a level sequencer. Create a new folder, call it Cinematics. And I'm going to set the frames per second to 24 frames per second, because this is a cinematic. I'm going to create a cinematic camera actor. And I want to change some settings here. So uh, maybe I will set the focal length to 65. current aperture to maybe 1.2 to get some depth of field and for film back settings I will set to IMAX as this has quite a large sensor setting I'm going to set the crop to 2.39 and then I'm going to drag my camera into the sequencer which creates automatically a camera cuts track I'm going to go to cinematic mode. I'm going to set the end of our sequence to 500 and scale out the camera cut. I'm going to create a keyframe for the transform and I'm going to set this to cubic smart auto. If I select our camera, I can then position the start position, like so. I'm going to set to automatically create keyframes. Mm. About here. Great. And I'm going to go to our end frame. And I'm going to zoom to where I want to be. Probably there. And it hasn't automatically created a keyframe, so I'm going to do that here. Create a keyframe. And then so if we zoom through, this is what we have. I really do like that. I can see the top of one of the cubes here. So what I may need to do is just move the camera down on the Z axis. If I hit play, hit F11 to go into full screen, I can now play my sequence and this is what we have. All that remains is to adjust some of the project settings, materials, lighting, etc. for artistic taste. In your case, this will be entirely up to you. And then finally, it's time to move on to the rendering section. I'm going to click here on the sequencer to open up the movie render queue. Click settings on save config here. And I'm going to get rid of the JPEG. And I need anti-aliasing, game overrides, I'm going to choose EXR as the export, and then I'm going to choose in anti-aliasing for the purposes of this, 8 and 8. We do get a warning at the bottom, but I'm going to override anti-aliasing and set to none. And then in output and choose where I want to save my EXR sequence. I can double up here by simply doing a times 2. 
so I get a 4K resolution. I want to add a color output here. I'm going to disable the tone curve. This will output linear for color grading afterwards. All I have to do now is it render local and it will begin rendering. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the thanks button underneath this video. Alternatively, head over to buymeacoffee.com and support me that way. More tutorials are on the way, but for now, could you please hit like and subscribe? I will see you in the next one.